everyone and welcome to another newscast. My name is Sam Healy and in this video we're going to tell you all the latest news about our projects as well as the company. And as always, if you don't want to watch the entire video, you can skip to the parts that interest you by utilizing the timestamps in the description below. This week we won't have any further information on Time of Legends Joan of Arc, Reichbusters Project Vril, Super Fantasy Brawl, Enchanters, or Hell the Last Saga. For Solomon Cain this week, we'd like to follow up last week's update with some more detailed shipping information that we've compiled since then. For our Australia New Zealand hub, the container has been collected and is heading to the port in China with an estimated departure date of January 11th and is estimated to arrive at port February 9th. For Europe, Containers headed to Meeple Logistics are being collected with an estimated departure date of January 12th and is estimated to arrive at port February 10th. As we stated last week, two containers are already bound for our North American hub at Quartermaster Logistics and they are estimated to arrive on February 5th, but another six containers bound for North America will be leaving China in two weeks. Our Asian hub, VFI, is locally picking up the copies for our backers there. The estimated arrival of those copies at the hub is January 20th. Now I know our backers in the UK are undergoing some undiscovered logistical territory of late, and I'll be trying to run down current information for our current fulfillments, like Solomon Kane and Enchanters. But I did want to mention a couple of tidbits to fill in a little of the gap. First of all, we will be working with Spiral Galaxy in the UK in 2021. We made this decision so that we could at least minimize, if not completely avoid, additional import fees for us and our backers. I also wanted to reiterate the usefulness of joining our Discord server for staying in contact with us as a company. Generally speaking, it's a great place to come and ask questions on this sort of thing and get more up-to-date information from us without having to rely on this video and Leo's live videos. You can find the link to join our Discord server in the description below. For Steam Watchers this week, as we stated last update, the game is at the factory to begin the process of production. So we don't have any more news on that front, but we'll continue to update you when we have more news to share. A question, however, was asked last week regarding the lore book we spoke about, and we wanted to address it in the wider audience. So where is the lore book going to be? Well, the short answer is that it will be in each core box in this print run. And this will also include the overstock we will have in the eShop after fulfillment is complete from this print run too. And that's pretty much it for, for Steam Watchers right now, so we'll see you soon. For Darkest Dungeon today, we'd like to begin a new series that we call the Hero Spotlight. As a matter of course, we're still going to continue updating you on all the other aspects of the game as we journey through the development process. Uh, in a previous update though, we talked to, to you about the bosses and their rooms. The work that needs to be done on them, however, is more than we can really cover in these short updates. As such, while we're working on developing the bosses and playtesting them, we wanted to showcase the heroes. So far, we've talked about some of the perils that you'll face around the Hamlet, and we feel that now is the time to start talking about the characters that will help you overcome them. For our first hero spotlight, we've chosen our righteous champion, the Crusader. The Crusader is a hero that prefers to be in the front lines. A whopping six of its seven skills can only be used from the first two stances, aggressive and defensive. And only three of them can be used from the range and support stance. Its massive life pool guarantees high survivability, and although it is one of the slowest characters with a speed of one, its stun resistance helps the Crusader stay in the thick of battle. Now, even though the Crusader is very much a frontline tank, its seven skills still classify it as an all-round balanced character. Skills like Smite and Zealous Accusation can inflict a great amount of damage. Stunning Blow is a skill that helps control the battlefield by stunning your enemies. 
with bulwark of faith, the crusader gains protection, making itself even more resilient to punishment, while at the same time, he's marked, drawing the attention of the monsters towards him. Additionally, by using this skill, the Crusader also increases the torchlight by two, something that can be very beneficial for the whole party. Now, he can also support his teammates directly with Battle Heal and Inspiring Cry, skills that can remove wounds or stress in addition to increasing the torchlight. Lastly, if for some unfortunate reason the Crusader finds himself in the back rows, he can also use Holy Lance, a high damaging skill that pulls him forward right back into the thick of battle. So this concludes our first Hero Spotlight, Torchbearers, and we hope you enjoyed it. In our next update, we'll be back to more unpleasant things, we promise. Until then, try to keep your stress low and your spirits high. Hi. Before we stop the newscast, I wanted to share some stuff. I don't even know if I'm supposed to be doing this or not, but I'm going to do it anyway. So this is kind of a thing that I'm going to sneak in without the other Sam kind of knowing about it. Uh, and this is just going to be a time where I share some of the games that I've been playing and, and how much I've been enjoying them and why I've been enjoying them. That kind of, It won't take too long. Don't tell. But I wanted to do this because these are cool games and Mythic makes a lot of great games. We know that. But there's also a lot of other games out there that are really fun. So these are some of the things that I've been enjoying. Okay? So first off, Ticket to Ride London. Now, you're probably familiar with the name Ticket to Ride. This is a shorter version of Ticket to Ride. And it's really fun. If you like Ticket to Ride, it's really fun. And it's really fast. And it's also got some cool mechanisms of almost like area control on a ticket to ride map. So it's a really neat thing. You'll get some extra points at that at the end of the at the end of the game if you control different parts of London. There's also a New York one that's available as well. There might even be others out there too, but New York and London are the two that I've played in this smaller version of Ticket to Ride. They're really fun. So go check this out. If you're a Star Wars fan, you absolutely must go buy this game. And I say that because I'm a Star Wars fan and I was a little apprehensive, but after the first, well, pff, after the tutorial and after the first mission, I'm hooked. And I hope they come out with more of these. This is called Star Wars from the Unlo uh, Unlock the Escape game. This is super duper coolness. Star Wars escape rooms in a box. Now, as I said, I've only played the tutorial, which is only 10 minutes, and then the first mission, which is where you get to engineer the escape from Hoth, come on, and uh, it's just really a good time. The missions, the regular missions take an hour, or they rather give you an hour. You can finish them faster than that, and that will help you gauge kind of what your score is. But it's app-assisted, and the app is really cool, has great Star Wars sounding music. It's not the actual Star Wars music, but it sounds very similar to it. Um, and it has little cool things where you pick up the device and you can use it for like uh, range finders, macro binoculars, and that type, of, that type of stuff. Really a cool thing. Really enjoyed this a lot. So if you are a Star Wars fan and you have not gone out and purchased this, even if you don't like escape room games, because I usually don't. I, I think they're they're too fiddly, and most of them, or a lot of them that I've come across, you have to consume them as you go through them. <clears throat> this, however, this is right down my alley, because you don't have to consume the game. It is replayable to an extent. I've played the first um, uh, mission now three times. Um, two of those I was just kind of helping. The first time I was really trying to go through it, but the other two times I was just helping it, but it was still fun to watch the people play it. And I was able to give pointers so they didn't always have to use the hints that are in the app. But this is really fun, people. And I was apprehensive, so go try it. Or else. All right, look, I was just kidding about the or else part. I'm not going to hurt you. Not like I can. I'm six feet away from you, right? Uh, but anyway, this one is one that um, I've always liked. It was one of Z's favorites uh, when I was back with the Dice Tower, but that is Atlantis Rising by Galen Sissels or Gissels. I probably murdered that last name, but that's part of the 
par for the course, so you get it. This version has Vincent Dutrait's artwork in it. Vincent Dutrait is an amazing artist. Check out the rest of his work. He's super awesome. He makes all the games he touches look much, much better than they ever could without his artwork. All right, so here you go. This is a great cooperative game, and it's not a hard cooperative game either. Now, it's challenging, don't get me wrong, but it's not hard. And let did I mention Vincent Dutrait's artwork? Oh, my heave, people. It's amazing. So thematic, pulls you in, and the gameplay is also very fun as well. There's a little bit of luck in there with dice rolling and stuff like that, but for the most part, it's simply can you puzzle this together and uh, get it to work cooperatively. So that is Atlantis Rising. This is not a new game. This is an older game. This is, a matter of fact, the second edition that Elf Creek Games put out, but it is an amazing production, and uh, this is the one you should probably go out and get if you can find it, um, because it's awesome. They just had a Kickstarter for an expansion, so you're, you might still be able to, uh, uh, you might still be able to get in on it. So yeah, there you have it. This is cool. All right, so look, this is something, I'm not an alter ego or anything like that. I was just kind of goofing around. Anyway, this is something that I'm going to, that uh, we're, we're going to be doing because some of our, you know, we're running thin on projects that need to be updated at Mythic Games. So with that in mind, we're going to start doing a little editorial section, if I can call it that. Uh, we'll have another name hammered out. Um, Helena and I are going to be looking at that, what we should name this little uh, section of newscast. But uh, it's just kind of an editorial thing. I'll also be trying to look at some other Kickstarters from other companies that I think, that I think, not necessarily the, the company, that I think will be uh, worth your lending an eye to, at least. Not, not going to tell you to go back it, but... I'll, I'll say that uh, this is something you should look at, but I think it's because I think it's cool. So with that, this is just something fun I thought we'd do, kind of liven up newscasts a little bit, make it its own thing, rather than just presenting the news that's going to be presented uh, in Leo's Live as well. That's all we're doing here. Let me know in the comments what you think, if it's a good idea or not, and uh, let's get back to the other alter ego, Sam, so that uh, we can get out of here. Anyway, bye. <laughs> Now remember that Leo will be live tomorrow at 6 p.m. GMT, 1 p.m. Eastern Time here in the States on our YouTube channel with a live Q&A in English and at 8.30 p.m. Paris Time with a live Q&A in French. So make sure you mark that on your calendar to come and spend some time with Leo. Maybe see what he might spoil or not. But that's it for this week. Stay home, stay safe, play some games while you're at it, and... We'll see you on the flip side. Take care.